Hello, 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 Sunny Bonani. Welcome back to another episode of Tenjue Comedy uh, Quarantine Diaries. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we really appreciate you. Today's uh, show is very interesting because I am chatting to a friend of mine, uh, Paulina Somo. Uh, a lot of South Africans and actually do comment and let me know if you know that it is not just other uh, citizens from other African countries that move to South Africa. We as South Africans also go and find opportunities or seek opportunities in other countries. That's the one question I want you to answer because I always hear people of South African uh, origin. Number one, Mina, personally, when I grew up, I didn't know other African countries. I had no interest of going to Africa for any reason. And I actually thought South Africa was different from other African countries because what we are taught is USA, Paris, UK. Have you ever thought of leaving South Africa to go and live in another African country? Have you been to another African country? Let me know in the comments as we are joined today by a very good friend of mine, uh, my neighbor. Upolina Soma. We will tell you why we are neighbors. And uh, she's got a very interesting story because she already had an interesting and successful uh, life in South Africa. And But she left and went to Zambia. She currently lives in Zambia, in Lusaka. So let us ask, uh, let us welcome Upolina. And please do let me know where you are watching from as we welcome our guest, Upolina Soma. My neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Good to see you. <laughs> You're supposed to be here. It's in Berlin, so lovely. But hey. I know. I, yeah. Mr. Rona is not making things easy, and it doesn't look like things are getting better, especially back home in South Africa. It's not looking good. It's really not looking good. But we hope that it will pass as soon as possible. And how are things in Zambia? In Zambia, things things are fine. The numbers are still quite low. Well, of course, we are hoping that we are being given accurate numbers, but it seems that um, the numbers have been kept quite low. Um, but the worry is that the coronavirus does exist, but because the numbers are low, people have fallen into the trap of thinking that actually, nah, maybe we are not really affected. So. You know, when you see people walking in the streets and, you know, as if nothing is happening and going about their lives without masks and all of that, it it kind of is worrying because we all know how quickly things can change. We all know how things quickly change because I remember when this thing started in South Africa, it was just numbers. But now we are at a point where it no longer numbers, it names, it names of people we know. Not yeah. only are we seeing them... Uh, catching the virus we are burying people that we know and unfortunately yeah. at this time not only those of us who are being locked down in other countries but even if you are at home you can't even go and bid your farewell you can't attend funerals because of the restrictions so it's yeah. becoming scary i saw a video i don't know if you saw it where it was a uh, like proper news it's not a hearsay and even mm. the minister was talking on that video saying they are now digging graves. They have 1.5 yeah. million graves, mass graves that are ready for the bodies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I is very, it's, it's, it's very scary. I mean, people are feeling like um, it shouldn't have been put that way because it's over exaggerated. But I think we need to just understand that the reality is that people are dying, regardless of those numbers. Um, the fact is, um, there, there is actually, this thing is happening and more people are dying than before. Um, but I guess as, as, as human beings, we're very quick to be looking at government and blaming them for causing panic and all of that. But I think we, we do need that panic. And I don't think it's a scare tactic. It's actually happening. I mean, you did mention that people's names are coming up, people that we know. So it's not a joke. It's not something that's just been said. When you hear of people you've crossed paths with, 
that they are no longer here. Now it really starts hitting home. And I think that story was even a bigger wake up call for us. Um, I think it was necessary for us to hear that this is the real situation and provision has to now be made for more land for graves. And in Zambia, you guys did not go on a total lockdown. You didn't uh, lock the country, uh, except maybe for the borders, I think, which also you did quite at quite a later stage. How are things with work and schools? How have people managed? Are you practicing social distancing or are things just happening as normal? Um, there, there has been a practice of social distancing and obviously just educating members of communities um, in terms of sanitation, sanitization and all of that. Um, the president didn't enforce a total lockdown because Zambia is landlocked and really depends on many other um, um, countries in terms of, um, you know, things that need to come into the country or not locally made. So if he would um, go on a total lockdown, it would really mean that we'd have nothing coming into the country. So it would be very difficult. So he had to kind of go about it strategically and close some businesses like restaurants and schools did close and all of that. But now they've reopened restaurants, um, still saying people should practice, you know, the uh, social distancing and all of that. But it's difficult with restaurants. Bars are not open yet. That, he says, um, after winter, they will see what it's looking like before they open bars. But we've got, I just found out, today, in fact, yesterday, that there's actually a um, nightclub and bars association here in Zambia, and they're going on strike because they're not allowed to open. So it's, it's uh, yeah, that's, that's, it's funny what our priorities are as human beings. But we also look, looking at the reality of people are running businesses. And that's what they are really thinking about is that they haven't been making money since what, March. So as much as we can think that people are prioritizing the wrong things, we also need to look at it from a business perspective. So Zambia is pretty much operating as normal, um, but still, still really we are being, it's being pumped out there that, you know, keep the, the social distancing and be careful and keep sanitizing and all of that. But people are people at the end of the day. But we are trying. I mean, we are shooting on set at the moment. And that's um, it's 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 a little bit scary, but we've had to really um, control the numbers that um, are coming in and out of set and all of that. So all businesses are are affected. And it's good that you are mentioning that you are currently shooting on set. Uh, I'm sure you are practicing social distance because a lot of my friends who are in the industry have caught the virus and it, it becomes so scary because people do not understand how intimate our uh, industry is because you have to have people doing your makeup and like things that uh, require touching. But get a sickle lab. Why Zambia? Paulina, please tell us where is Paulina from? What does she do? And what is she doing in Zambia? I thought I'd see myself in Zambia. You mentioned at the beginning of the interview that, you know, we imagine ourselves in other places. We, you know, I imagined myself working in the States and, you know, Africa is never really an option for us in terms of opportunities. Um, but I think it, it, the opportunity came at the beginning of last year. I was feeling quite stagnant at the time um, in terms of work in, in Joburg. I was just moving from one production to the next and kind of feeling like, okay, now, now what? And then a colleague of mine who I had worked with before on one of the productions I did for um, Zanzi Magic, she then said to me, you know what, um, there's a production in Zambia um, that is, is, is under Zambezi Magic, which is a channel very similar to Mzanzi Magic, but it's basically the Mzanzi Magic of Zambia. Um, it is an M, um, Mnet channel as well. They have this massive production. Um, it's a telenovela. It's basically the biggest um, uh, telenovela in Zambia they are looking for a producer to consult for them in Zambia to come and assist them because Zambia, yes, does have producers, 
but um, it's the skills that are lacking. So they just needed a producer who was strong enough to come and lead the team and, you know, make the, to solidify the production because it had a lot of potential. So I decided to take up the offer and um, I literally took a plunge. It happened so quickly. I packed my bags. It was initially supposed to happen for 11 months. So I was basically like, guys, I'll be back. 11 months, I'll be back. But it's been, <laughs> it's actually been a year now and we're actually into a new season of this telenovela and yeah, which ends next year and you never know. So yeah, I'm practically living here. It was a matter of no guys, I'm just going around the corner, coming back. But yeah, I've ended up staying much longer and it's been an incredible stay. That's how I got to Zambia. And I like how you are doing this as if you are on some TV channel and you don't wanna mention the telenovela. Please mention it for us. People must watch in Pali. They do have some snippets on YouTube. Please, guys, let me actually write it down for those who might not know how to write it. Please tell us what's the name of Pali. Yeah, so the name of the telenovela is Mpali, um, which is basically polygamy. In, um, uh, that's what the word means, because this particular telenovela is set up around a polygamous family, you know, a, has a man who's married to some very interesting wives. And you get to know each and every one of them so intricately, and you get to understand the polygamous setup in such an amazing way. It's, a, it, it, it's more like reality, in fact, then it is drama because we we really take a lot of what happens in in real life and bring it into the story and and involve every single wife in fact one of the wives there's um four of them one of them um one of them is a one of them is an american wife so that completely flipped the whole script you know because zambia is a very cultural um very cultural society and suddenly we bring in a wife who is American and white. So yeah, it's um it's quite a it's quite an interesting story. And that's what we're doing. We started off with um they did season one on their own. I stepped in into season two, which was about it was 170 episodes. We finished those. Now we're doing 209 episodes of season three, and the viewers are absolutely loving it. And having worked in South Africa both on TV and radio. Was it difficult for you to make a move to Lusaka? It was, I think I was, um, I was, it was the most anxious that I've ever been in that period of time, knowing that I'm having to move to a different country. I had gotten very comfortable in South Africa. I hadn't moved around uh, very much except for, you know, just going in and out for holidays and visiting and all of that. But coming out of my secured environment and stepping into a country that I have never, you know, even, it, it never even crossed my mind that I would step into a country like Zambia. And what it has opened my eyes to as well was that we, we really don't know enough. And I think you've mentioned this, that we, our African history, honestly, I came here and I realized actually the, relationship between Zambia and South Africa is massive. We need to know these things and uh, we need to bring up our children knowing um, our history. So I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity and it's, uh, it's, it's, it has been crazy. It was difficult to adapt. You're coming into a country where, um, you know, it's a different language that is spoken. Things are done very differently. It's the pace is different as well. The lifestyle is different. We are very fortunate to have all that we have in South Africa. We complain about a lot of things. And I came to Zambia and I became exceptionally grateful for what I've had and what the circumstances that I grew up in as well. Um, because a lot of the things that we have in South Africa, we take for granted. Our African countries, a lot of them are not as developed as our country is. And yeah, it was, 
it's it's been rewarding in fact to be a part of this journey of actually coming stepping into a country where the film industry is also underdeveloped like many other industries and areas in the country but at least i get to play a role in one area that needs development which is the film industry which is also incredibly underdeveloped and we're trying to pump the skills in to get it to where it needs to be you say one industry but you are also on radio you do a breakfast show how easy was that and how have the people of zambia accepted you how do they treat you as a south african who dominates their airwaves um, I think that has been the scariest part is how will the people receive me? And um, to my surprise, from joining the Mpali team and being welcomed. So literally I got to, within a month of joining the Mpali team, I couldn't even feel that I was from a different country. And the same happened when I stepped into Capital FM. It, there was also a fear of, how will I be received? And I really have not had any issues in terms of fitting in. Like I say, it is you you forget at some point that you are different. There's really nobody will make you feel that you're different, which is actually, it makes me sad because I know that in my country, a lot of the time when somebody's different, you make them feel that yeah, you're not from here. And they don't do that to us. They don't do that to us here. So it's been, the reception has been amazing. It is a very different kind of, um, the people are different. They're not as outspoken as South Africans. I go into radio in South Africa and I expect backlash. I say one thing and people are attacking, people are commenting, people are agreeing, people are disagreeing. Here, they kind of sit back and listen. And and it's 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 different. You feel like, okay, guys, are you listening to me? Are you are you okay? Are you? But they're fine with just hearing you and and taking in what you have. And it's also a society that really kind of keeps to themselves. They don't want to um, put out their issues that much into the public space. So as we both know, Tenji, we're out in in, in South Africa. We are out there. Um, we, we put it all out there, I'm depressed, I'm feeling like this, I hate this, I can't stand that. Here it's very different. Um, and you'll find that a lot of people feel the same as we feel, but they just are, are less likely to express themselves. So that's the difference that I've been experiencing. And it's all about adapting to it as well and understanding that I'm speaking to a different audience. I need to respect who they are. I can't come and enforce my way of doing things on them. And that's been the huge learning curve. Sometimes I get frustrated and say, but why aren't they, why don't they do this this way? Because I think my way is right from where I come from. This is how it's done. But I need to understand that this is who they are. And if there are things I think that they can learn from where I come from, it's you, we bring it in nicely and slowly so that they can understand it and take it in. Um, at their own pace. Mm, that's yeah. so interesting. And I like how you mentioned the relationship between Zambia, especially Lusaka and South Africa. I remember the last time I was there, we went to Oliver Tambo's place. And those are the kind of things that I wish could be taught to our children in school. And we were told about the, 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 the graveyards of uh, the South Africans that were in Zambia in exile which unfortunately have been abandoned, but there's a story I will discuss another day. Uh, but do you think uh, our school syllabus is doing enough to teach our children in South Africa about the relationships we have with other African countries, as well as about the history of the people of Africa as, as a whole? Or are they more concentrating on other continents, on the history of other continents? Yeah, we we are focusing on on other continents. I mean, we've learned about um, we yes, we've learned about our own struggle, um, which is apartheid. But it's it's not enough because a lot of the other um, other African countries were involved in 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 getting us through that struggle. And that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand because we think that it's our struggle and our struggle alone. And when someone from outside of South Africa coming from 
another African country comes in, you shut them out and think, no, you, you don't know what we fought for. But they were actually a part of it. They helped us get there. Um, and I think it, it comes from a place, the way we behave comes from a place of not knowing. And if in our education system we can include this information, I think it would make a world of a difference. We are learning about, you know, the Jews and the Holocaust and all of that, all very interesting history that we learn about, but we are lacking um, in terms of the African history and understanding, because we speak of this one Africa that we'd like to see one day. But if we are not teaching this history and we are not informing why we need, we are actually one Africa, then people will continue to see themselves as separate, as having to having fought their own struggle. Nobody else understands their struggle, but in fact, it's the other countries who understand more because they, in fact, helped a lot of our political leaders hide and, 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 and keep away from danger and fight um, the atrocities that we were going through at a time where we were se severely oppressed. And to South Africans who have a dream of travel, I asked this question because I started uh, traveling to other countries in Africa quite late in life. Uh, the dream had always been to go to New York, get on a yellow cab, go to London, red buses, go to Paris, photo next to the Eiffel Tower, uh, you know, and that's a dream for a lot of um, South Africans. But once I started stepping out and going to countries within the continent, I realized that I was missing out. And now we're not just talking about missing out, not only on how rich and how beautiful our people are in our continent is or are, in terms of economy, when we come out of this, the economy is going to be crippled. What would you say to advise and encourage South Africans in particular to take uh, their travels to African countries instead of us always going to spend our money? Because uh, it's money to travel. And it, 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 the travel and what you call this industry, it's 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 very important as part in part of our economies to boost our economies in Africa. What would you say? Because a lot of South Africans don't want to go to other African countries because of what our TV unfortunately has fed us. We we think poverty, we think war, we think hunger. As someone who has lived in another African country, what could what would you say to a South African who's scared of going to other African countries? Well, I would I would say, you know what, I don't, you know, it's 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 being other African countries have been painted to just not be worth going to. But it is the most incredible, incredible experience because Africa, first of all, is beautiful and is worth worth visiting. So step out, even if it's just for a while and go and see what it is that's going on in our African countries. In fact, you will be more fulfilled than probably in the countries that you wish you would be. And someone said to me the other day, why would you choose Zambia? You went, you know, I wanna go to New York. I wouldn't come there. And I thought, okay, go to New York. But I can tell you that I'm a better person right now for coming here to Zambia. You also get to understand how fortunate we are. I mentioned that in South Africa, there's so many things that we complain about and don't understand how lucky we are. A lot of the other African countries are not where we are. They strive to be like us. And when you come into these countries, they really look at you like, you know, you're someone who's achieved something that they really want. And, and you, it, it becomes a very rewarding experience. And yes, it adds to the building of our economies. If we want to see that Africa that we are looking forward to, who, who is going to do it if we don't start investing in it ourselves? There's a lot of opportunity. There's just there's 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 a world of, of knowledge that 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 we can we can gain from each other. The amount of knowledge that I've gained from meeting different Zambians and learning um, how they operate and how they work and the things that are happening in their country is just it's incredible. You just I got to a point where I was like. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm okay 
right here, in fact. And if you're going to move me, rather move me to another African country so that we can just add to this um, this, 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 this struggling economy of ours that we, we all seem to struggle with in, in Africa, but if we would come together, we could actually make it work together. So yeah, I would say, give it a try. It's rewarding. It's an absolutely amazing experience to see um, what Africa has to offer. It makes you more, it brings you more in touch with your Africanness, in fact. I think since I came to Zambia, I've never been any more proud than I ever have been of being African because um, I was brought up very much in a, in a, in a, in a, I was brought up in a very westernized culture. So I was very much on, you know, Western side, African side, whatever, you know, I'm African, I'm, you know, it's all overrated, you don't have to define me. But I came to Zambia and I was like, I'm African. Yeah. Wow, that is very interesting. I wish we had more time because this would be so interesting uh, to hear your story. Like when you say you were brought up in a very Western way, it would be so interesting. Do you have two minutes just to explain to us so that people can understand this Paulina that now so proudly African and yeah, please just two minutes. We won't take too much of your time, please. Yeah, of course I can give you just a, a sneak preview. It, would, it won't be much detail because it, it can get quite complicated. I'm trying to write about it, Tenji, just so that I can get it all out so that everyone can have a full understanding. But when, when I was born, uh, my mother was a domestic worker in Johannesburg. And when she fell pregnant with me, the family that she was working for then decided that they can't, they, they, they can't continue without her because she doesn't have anyone to take care of me. We are from Hamanskral. And so she went to Hamanskral to give birth. And she thought, well, there's no one that I can leave my child with, so I'm going to stay in Hamanskral. And she told them that they can find somebody else to work for them. Then they made the decision to not find someone else. And they said, you know what, come to Joburg and come with your baby. So she went back. And that was the beginning of, of my story, basically. I grew up in this family, very religious Jewish family, um, with my mother working for them. But as I was growing up, I was, I became more and more a part of the family. So I became more and more a part of their daily activities and everything. And I grew up as their child. So I had these two families on one property. My mother and my father lived on the same property. And we had this family. So I'd spend a lot of time in the main house with my white Jewish family. And I'd also spend time um, with both my parents. So I had a very white upbringing and very black upbringing. It could be quite a privileged life. A lot think that it was a privileged life, but it can also be um, rather confusing for a child. And I think at the time when you're still a child, it's okay, but it's only when you grow up, when you realize there's, you, you're not quite sure where you fit in. There's an identity crisis, but at the same time, you learn to say, let me take from both and see what, who I am from both sides, but also just remembering at the end of the day that I am African, that's what defines me. But I gained positively from both families. And yes, there were negatives. Apartheid was very much alive at the time. There were people in the white family who were unhappy with me staying, you know, with um, the family that had kept me there. So these are the things that I was entangled with growing up. I was then put into a Model C school as well, which also just teaches you certain ways of doing things. I'd go home to Hamanskral with my parents and I wouldn't know how to speak English and I would be made fun of. All those things are the things that kind of make up the story that I'm writing. And I think it will be quite an interesting one. But um, I think 
it's, it's, it's a big one when you come to the kind of situation that we find ourselves in now in South Africa, where race relations have become so massive and it's so raw and it's something that is really needs to be spoken about. And a person like me who's had the upbringing from both a black family and a white family kind of stands in between and says, okay, where do I belong? Which side do I take? And that's where it becomes quite difficult. Yeah, we will be the first ones to buy the book when it's ready. Bring it onto yes. the platforms. We will definitely be the first ones to buy the book. And the talent in, in Zambia, because when I first went to Lusaka, I was just amazed by the talent in the acting uh, in, in industry. The raw talent that is there and the, the commitment to their art. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I, I want to move to Lusaka. It's if it massive. Was, I would have been there now because we had so many plans of a lot yeah. of work to do, which we will still do at a later stage we when have everything to. opens up. But please just take us through the talent and the difference between working with South African talent and Zambian talent. The talent is absolutely amazing, Tenjiwe. We've got you know, just our main cast on Mpali, we've got the six wives who are just something else in terms of just how they play their individual roles in this man's life. You have this man, Mr. Nguzu, who also just has grown tremendously. And then you have the young ones who are around them as well, who are the kids and, you know, the ones who are then supporting as well. The way they take their work so seriously because they realize that this opportunity is rare. Tenji, where there isn't, like I said, the film industry is not where it's supposed to be. There aren't many productions like Mpali. People would die to be on a production like Mpali. We get emails, we get messages, we get calls every day. Please, I want even a small role. So anyone who is on this production understands that. And that is why they just give it their all. And maybe that is where the difference is um, with the talent here in Zambia to the talent in South Africa is because the talent in South Africa probably think, you know, we've made it and you need us anyway, you know. Uh, so I think there's, there's a difference there in terms of the, 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 the level of development is that in South Africa, there's so many productions. You can move from one production to the next and just be like, you know what, you guys don't appreciate me, I'll go to the next production and you'll behave like a diva and you'll become difficult to work with. But these guys are so amazing to work with because they will do anything to keep getting better. They will do anything to stay in the game. And those are the best people to work with. And they are so teachable. They are people who want to learn. They are always asking and always wanting to grow. And that's how they develop themselves every day. So you're always able to see an improvement the level of acting when the scene is sad it makes you sad when it's happy it makes you feel it to a point where i've had moments where i watch them and i cry and you know you you become emotional even if even though i know the story and i understand that it's supposed to be that way but you're just amazed by the incredible talent and the growth and the, the fact that you're just, you're a part of it. So I, I really appreciate it. And I wish, I wish that some of our actors in South Africa would also just notice and realize that they are so lucky to be where they are um, because there are, there are people out here who are, who are just holding on for dear life. And so they will not even dare make one mistake or allow this opportunity to slip through their fingers. So yeah, the level of respect as well and dedication is just, is, is really incredible. And it's, it, it really it teaches you a lot. Yeah, guys. And I wanna give you guys a taste of Zambian talent. I'll leave a link. Don't watch it now, watch it when we finish uh, this conversation. I went to Zambia with you in Koza. Uh, we're going for something else, totally different, stand-up comedy. We got there and saw the talent and I was like, there's no way we're living here without doing anything. So mm. 
quickly put together a script for uh, Judge, which is now the Zambian version, Judge Katongo, not Judge Kambule. And uh, within a day, like everything happened within a day. The idea was in the morning, by lunchtime we had shots. And I want you guys, not just shots, but created a, like a fake court and everything, got, got everyone and everyone was so willing to be part of it. The, here is the link guys, please do watch that and tell me if you can do that in South Africa. It will take them five years just to negotiate. <laughs> and, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I really want you guys to to take a look at that. I'm sure you will be impressed. Uh, I know what I said I wasn't going to keep you long, Paulina, but I've got two people who've been yes. back here in the comments to join. Oh. I either have something to say or uh, some things to ask you or some experiences to share. So I'm going to put mm -hmm. a link now for you guys, Utobeno Patrick, I think who wanted to join us, please do click on the link, Tobe, Gile, Kosi, and Patrick, please do click on the link and uh, join us. I, I, I'm i looking forward to hearing, Uti, uh, yeah, what experiences you guys are coming with or what questions. This is the beauty of this show, because you never know where it's going to go, which direction it's yeah. going to go. That's, yeah. that's, that's the beauty of it. You start with one thing and then it always ends up being something else. Hey, Zonke. Hey. <laughs> Zonke is Zonke. our friend and, and business partner, but she doesn't our like. Our neighbor. Our neighbor as well. But she doesn't <laughs> want uh, to, to be on camera. She likes being behind the scenes. Yeah. Please, yeah. while well, I welcome U Ule Mohile and the two guys that are going to join us, please, yeah. can you explain to them why we are neighbors? This thing. We are neighbors because we have a plan. We have a plan to build something here in Zambia, to build our homes here in Zambia. And Tenji and I decided we are actually going to be neighbors. So, mm. yeah, that's the dream that we are going to make happen. We are manifesting that. Yep. Who's joining us? Uh, we have Lemohile here, and that uh, we are still waiting for Tobegile. No, no, Patrick to join us. How are you? Right. Lemohile, can you hear me? We cannot hear you. We Hello? Hear him. We cannot hear you. I do not know what is wrong. Uh, Tobe Gile and uh, Patrick, please join us. Are uh, you guys still here? Tobe, Tobe Gile and Kosi. Please join us. And also Patrick wanted to join us. So, wow, it's a party. And uh, Lemohile is having trouble connecting. So I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Poor dead, rich dead vibes. Oh, wow. <laughs> <That's so true. laughs> but at least you got to learn from both worlds, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's both worlds um that can you know at, at at the beginning it's 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 quite an experience because they do the things for you um that your parents probably couldn't do for you but at the same time you need to learn you need to learn to still respect your parents they're not um you know you can't they're not second best they're still your parents your mother still gave birth to you and i think that's the respect I have for, in fact, the my white families, that they never, ever tried to sway me more towards their side and lead me to kind of maybe disrespect my mother. They allowed my mother to be um, the mother that she needed to be, but still, um, you know, made sure that they step in and assist where they can um, in the areas where, you know, she was probably lacking which is which is incredible. I mean, there are many people who grew up in the same situation and you found that um, the person moved away from their actual family 
and moved more towards the white family because they have more, they can do more. And it catches up with you at some point. And, you know, some of those people are, you know, in situations where now they, they're trying to reconnect with their families. That's where it, it ends you up. But I'm grateful to have been with a family that allowed my family to be who they were, regardless of what they had or didn't have. Mm. Yeah. That is uh, so interesting. And that your book is such a necessary part of our history that we need to read about because we never read about such stories. We the, 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 the common story is the horrible madam and the poor maid. Yeah. So it will be yeah. so nice to, to, to read about that. Uh, unfortunately, Utobe, no Patrick, but that does they are not joining us. Disappeared. Okay. Yeah, so I do not know why. But thank you so much for joining us. What uh, advice can you leave us with, Pauline, in terms of uh, looking at our continent as, 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 as a place that's worth exploring? Um, I would say open yourselves up to exploring the continent. Um, definitely allow your kids let your kids know that they need to explore this continent. Don't try and sell them this idea of um, New York and whatnot. Yes, those countries do exist. Let's go there, but let's build our continent. It's going to do a lot for them. It opens up a lot for you as well in Africa and not just, you know, this little cocoon that is, that, that, that is South Africa. Um, we tend to get stuck there and we we feel entitled and we think that you know this is we've made it but it's until you step out of your own country and realize that there are different people out there and in fact as much as they are different we are more alike than anything our cultures are very much intertwined we are africans at the end of the day there's always those similarities that will make will remind you that actually we are we are we are one africa is beautiful i'm still i'm still learning um, I'm still researching Zambia as well to see all the things that I, I didn't know about it. Every day I'm learning something new and hopefully I'll, I'll be able to step out into other countries as well. This is not where it ends, but yeah, I think let's broaden our horizons and bring our children up to believe in this Af Africa that we want to see instead of just talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've got... Uh... Ustis Noamsa joining us. Uh, I, she, she, she's been watching the show as well. She was okay. saying in the comments that she's got some good friends in Zambia. I'm sure she wants oh, to nice. share that with us about her friends in Zambia. So that Naban Babon is a Ukamba mang. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm Zambia, I'm And then you're like, Zambia, Zambia, Zambia. Sis Noamsa, I'm Hi, Polina. Hi, Sisi. 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 That is the best country to migrate to. It's a very good country. And I've got friends from Zambia. They are here in the UK. So the, the first time I knew about their pride in their culture, they invited me. They usually do, they call it a kitchen party, but it's something like we are with Niawaza, my kitchen party. Oh my word, I've never been so impressed in my entire life. Yes, they invited me. By attendance, you could invite because they love the African attire, the South African attire. It's closer because I've got Isi Zulu, I've got Isi Venda. So they love when I go to there and wearing my, you know, whatever I'm wearing. So they always invite me when they've got that. And any indoor, they are very respecting those people by Nipa. They are so respecting, they are down to earth. We are supposed to accommodate all Africans, but Zambians are number one. 
they are like the Tanzanians. They are like the Tanzanians. They are the same. They are so down to earth. So I just wanted to add on that. Bengi tang join go stream yet, but ngabon gut ngono ngi kulu mega ngi vele go screen lento guting. Na bo I'm sure they were watching me. I love them so much. I love them so much, and I wish singa inza njalo njalo singa kogi is indoze to the sin to ngoba na gugui Heritage Day only. We should be proud of who we are, you know, continue the legacy. They do it here in the UK. They book a hall and wow, what they are doing. I, I, I wish I could share the videos with you. Unfortunately, I can't. I would, I'm like, to me, I'm not changing ways, Tom, but I'm a video. You'll see what they they are doing. It's really nice. Nyabonga Gakul, Paulina, you are not less lost to CC. You've gone to the best country. Thank you, guys. Oh. Thank you so much, Sis Nomsa. Oh, that was really beautiful and encouraging. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sis Nomsa. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, kitchen party, guys, we, we, actually, we must get someone Yay. from Zambia to come and show us. There's a friend of ours uh, who does Ilo Kuzan. Yeah. They're also saying, I agree, agree with you, Sis Nomsa. Zambia is indeed a great country to migrate to. Uh, who, yes. who does a show, a reality show, kitchen party? Yeah, we will. Maybe I'll get the presenter from the show to come to the show yes. and, and tell us yes. what the kitchen party is about. It will be so interesting for you guys uh, to 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 learn about that. So, uh, yes. what would you say? Let me start with you, sis Nomsa. What would you say to South African about the importance of us visiting the continent? Um, the importance of visiting our continent, especially Africa. We should forget about the attitude because they are our, our people. I do understand where we are coming from. Our anger is because of those bad elements in a, that is why I go to a one rotten potato spoils the whole bag because it's only a few people, a handful that go come to South Africa. But figure Benz is in doing a correct so civilly since young and is a one common to open my panels by challenge of wood lavanda be right. It's not all of them, there are very good people. You know, I'll, I'll share something with you, Mina. When I man in Jeng Bangila. I met two ladies from in different places. They were both Zimbabweans and not even, not even Debeles. They were shown us. Do you know those ladies bangi Caesar ni sinking in in different incidents? They did they didn't even know that me. We only met M7 Zini and we exchanged numbers. And then there was a time La Beng Sanking any. I rang this lady. She helped me. But with, with a South African, you will never, Futula, <laughs> you will never get help. You will never. They always have reasons. I was like, oh, yes, Nabu Kulumizolo, Ntumele Mali, Jenam Shan, Izolo, Uko, Guamushoni. They come with, with stories. But those Zimbabwean ladies, they, you know, I, I will never forget them. Unfortunately, we lost contact. I'm still looking for them. I'm still looking for them. So I would encourage people to go. Like me, now, I used to have that attitude, I will never go to such to Africa, any place. But I, I, beca I became open-minded. It's really important to go out and see. And the other thing, you learn different cultures, Zama Africa, because this culture is somewhere, somehow. Although we don't do the same thing, but some of the things, this is in Zayo, South Africa as, as according to our tribes. So you, we can learn a lot. We can learn, learn so many things. Like, but culture. So we tall. Pick up the good thing from those people. Don't look at them. They are not South Africans. They are part of us. That is why we call ourselves 
Africans. You know, my daughter is an artist. She sings. She writes her own music. She's a DJ. She's here. So all her friends, young Kintoyens, she's doing it with Nigerians, Zambians, Ghanaians, everyone, all Africans. Because she's open-minded. So I I would advise all Africans to be open-minded and try Maune Madana, try to visit those countries. Foot, I don't think we need visas. Do we need visas to go to visit uh, African states? I don't know. Unfortunately, for some of them, we do need visas. Some we get visas uh, at, when we at the port of entry. Uh, but yeah, South Africa and yeah. other African countries need to come together because it's, it's such a shame that when I travel with my British passport, I don't need a visa to any African country. Yes. But when I travel yeah. with my South African passports, I need a visa to a lot of South African countries. Not South African, to a lot of African countries, which is such a shame. So that's something that our leaders need to change. Uh, Paulina? Yes. What would you say to uh, our fellow friends who are watching this, right now who's that that means there is no visa needed in africa they need visas nigeria yeah, some... you, need visa. you can get a visa on arrival but you still need a visa if you go to yeah a some of the some of the countries you do need a visa um zambia it's a passport but if you're going to stay longer it's a process of getting permits and yeah it's it's quite difficult to 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 stay in the country so I'm hoping that we will get to a point where it can be easier because also that can make you feel, I can tell you that it can make you feel like a foreigner. Having mm. to go to immigration and deal with getting permit renewals and all of that, that's when you're reminded that I don't belong here. And that's sad. That's the mm. sad part. Yeah. There are limits also of how long you can stay, not just how long you can stay for that visit, but how long you can visit per year. Yeah. Yeah. So Sometimes if, you've already, if you come in, say, for the third time and they look at your visas on your passport and they say you've already done your, your 90 days in the past uh, 365 days, so we cannot let you in. You have to wait and come back another year. Yeah. So it is. Yeah. there are so many complications. And in some countries you have not to pay. Same as when people come to South Africa. You might not need to apply for a visa before you leave, mm. which is always because they can deny you at the port of entry and i have seen yeah. people being denied in african countries or in south yeah. africa even. Uh, yeah so that's the problem so what advice would you give us my pola pola my neighbor about us <laughs> and traveling uh, africa especially when it comes to boosting african economy with travel and tourism yeah, travel and tourism, that's the, it's the important part. And I don't think it's, it's not something that should be difficult because these countries have amazing sights to see. I've been in Zambia for a year and I still haven't traveled around enough to see the whole country. I still have places that I want to go to um, that people are talking about. So there's so much to see. It's not like you come um to to just dry land africa is incredibly beautiful just like in south africa we has um, ever have, have these amazing sites um that that we have to offer and you know when people come to south africa you know they come the kruger national park and all of that zambia has also incredible places to go to and see that you would never have known and it's until you step out of south africa that you will know unfortunately African countries are not really marketed to us very well. So we tend to not know about what there is for us to see. So then we think that then maybe there's nothing to offer. So I think it would be great if we were told more about what it is that we can expect to see if we step out of South Africa into Nigeria, into Zambia, into um, wherever it is that we'd like to go in Africa because the places are there, but we're made to think that there's nothing to go for. And I think there's also opportunities that we aren't told about. We're told about opportunities all over the country and all these incredible places. So unfortunately also, 
I wish that so, um, I wish that African countries could market themselves more. Um, that is something that I think people could actually because I think on on my social media, people get to know of places that they've never heard of before, and they will just think, "Where is that? Are you still in Zambia?" And I'll be like, "Yeah, I am still in Zambia. Where is that?" Where, what are you doing? Where's, you know, it, it looks amazing, this place that you're at. I'm like, yes, I'm still in Zambia. In fact, I'm in Lusaka. This is whatever, whatever place in Lusaka. So people are always shocked. They're like, are you sure you're in Zambia still? Yes, it's still Zambia. So these places, people don't know them. I wish um, they could be more well marketed so people could know about them. Then you'd actually feel that there's something to come to when you come into these other countries. I think Tenjiwe is um, struggling with her network, but in I'm the meantime, back. yes. Hi, are you back? <laughs> Can you? Are you, you back guys hear us? me now? I'm back. Yeah, yeah. No, we. I just continued just to explain that um, our country is actually. Can you guys African... hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? She's disappeared again. I am back. I do apologize for this. I don't know what happened. Can you guys hear me now? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. It's uh, oh, thank it's, you so much. It's network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, we need to market our countries, our African countries more because there's so much that we are missing out on that we don't know about the countries that um, are around us. So we happen to think that, no, there's nothing there. So people get surprised when they see that actually there's a lot of activity going on where you are. Hmm. And I think that starts with follow, uh, people following such platforms as this one. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Following people like Bo Polina who are traveling and are radio personalities because we talk about these things. Because unfortunately, as a continent, we do not control our media. So there's only so much we can say to promote ourselves as a continent. So it not, uh, yeah, it's more complicated than just African countries not promoting themselves. Uh, we find that a lot of European people enjoy Africa more than we do. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. come and they visit Africa. It's such a shame that there are even African uh, resorts that only allow Europeans. But that's a story for another day. But we need to make sure we travel within the continent. Thank you so much. Uh, it's my dream is to visit all the African countries, all the African countries. Yeah. You will. Ooh. Yeah, and some it's of them you can it. drive to. That's with Swaziland. Yes. You can even take a taxi. Uh, yes, this is uh, Can I just add on uh, this thing of uh, traveling to African states? Um, most of I've met quite a few of my friends, actually acquaintances here in the UK, who always say, hey, "It's better if you've got a British passport." because you'll be traveling. They are so interested in just traveling to Europe, you know, all these countries and America. They never talk about going to Africa. I would encourage them to also go to Africa because it's our country and it's beautiful. Africa is beautiful. There's a link, I can't remember what, what, what the link is called. The, Africa is also marketing itself. It does. It, you, you, you'll see beautiful places. So, Osbuzai, my husband always click on it. Magasekai, I pegelele. Utolesi pegel. Isn't that beautiful places? Africa is stunning, guys. It is stunning. So, I would encourage people back on Gutbatate, like they usually to take the cruises. They should take a cruise and go around Africa to see how beautiful it is. And Coming to Indabaye visa, I remember my niece was getting married. My my niece is married to a Nigerian guy. So she, she wanted my husband, Babu to be the one who is going to take to 
take her hand and give her to Umkwenyana. So she unfortunately she didn't know what they are supposed to, I don't know they they are supposed they were supposed to have some immunizations before they go that we didn't know unfortunately they couldn't go because they only discovered when they arrived at the airport they had already got the visas but when they arrived at the airport they were asked to ask where is your record of showing the immunizations that you've had they, they were like, like, wow, immunizations, we don't know anything about. So they didn't go, unfortunately. And my daughter being this side, she was meant to go, but she couldn't go. Same reason, Yama immunizations. And the other thing, it's not only us who are talking bad about, like, especially in Nigeria. Do you know what you, a friend of my daughter who is Nigerian, she... He, he, he said to my daughter, don't go to Nigeria. It's not a safe place. He told my daughter that he is Nigerian, but not born in Nigeria. He was he is born somewhere in Europe, but I won't mention the place. So he was born in Europe, but it's known that he's Nigerian. His parents are both Nigerians. So when... I've got to stop you there. I was about to say he must be someone who was not born in Nigeria. I've been to Nigeria a number of times. Actually, I'll do a video about Nigeria. Just like any other country, just like in London, there are places that are no-go areas. In New York, there are places that are no-go areas. In Los Angeles, there are places that are no-go areas. But that guy, he's one of those Europeanized uh, kids who think that Africa is dangerous. I, I beg to differ. Nigeria is like any other country. There are no-go areas, areas, there are good okay. areas. All right. Let let me just I I haven't finished so <laughs> I haven't finished. I was about to say he told my daughter that whenever he goes to Nigeria, because they don't know him, he's got I don't know, it's an uncle who is top in the police department. So he's supposed to send some police to come and get him from the airport because he can't travel home on his own in a text or what so i don't know any that was not the first time somebody from nigeria says that to my daughter because my daughter is keen she she always says she wants to go to nigeria but most of the time she's told don't go there it's bad so you'll never know you know it depends on people's experiences same as like south africa in south africa i can say to people wow there's mtn rank it's bad there and automatically South Africa is a bad place yet South Africa is good has got good places so that's what I, I was trying to explain yeah thank you so much but yeah guys let us not take one uh, experience or one assumed experience because I mean I've, I've been in public transport in Nigeria I've been in the good areas in the bad areas uh, from Banana Island to Makoko, and all I have received was warmth. And the people, are, but I'll do a video on, on my experience in Nigeria. And yes, just like any other country, there are no go areas. Even in Paris, there are places where they tell you, don't go there. What are you doing there? What were you doing? In Rome, there are places where you don't go. The Vatican, they will tell you, don't cross the street this way. So everywhere, the corner is in those a corner. What's your greatness, uh, Johannes? It's true, saying you. I have Nigerian friend. They say the same thing. Yes, but just like we have South Africans who can say the same thing. I mean, all I'm saying is, let us not paint one country with one brush. There are no go areas everywhere, even in the Western world. Even there are houses with with rats and cockroaches in New York, but the only New York we see is Manhattan. The rich part. Anyway, we were with U Upolina as she was Valelisa ring and telling us why we should be visiting the continent. Yeah, um, I think Usis Nomsa raised quite an important thing to say, you know what, they, um, they are in fact sites that show um, African countries and the beautiful places that you can go to. So maybe it's us as Africans who turn a blind eye on our own neighboring countries, you know, um, which is something we need to change. 
So we need to open ourselves up to visiting our neighboring countries and appreciating them. And in fact, it will make us appreciate more where we come from. It changes you as a person. It changes how you see um, your own life and your own experiences. And you come out of this cocoon that you've been in of entitlement and, um, and thinking that you, you're being shortchanged and you must just be complaining every day. You come out and you see um, other people's lives out there who are still struggling to get to where you are as well. And it makes you appreciate and say, okay, maybe in fact, um, I don't have it so bad. So that also is an opening. It, it is, it opens up so much um, into, into just getting to understand where you are as a place of privilege and understanding that you can be grateful instead of always just wanting more and more and more when there are people who are struggling to be even where you are. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. I hope uh, we have made at least some of you uh, in have that dream. Let's go and visit the continent. And thank you for sharing your story, Paulina. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the book. And uh, it is it's, it, it's just so nice for us guys to come together, share our stories, share our experiences. Uh, and yeah, Usis Nam said there's something else she wants to say. Let me just uh, yeah. give her a chance to say. Yeah, I just wanted to add on the side, Yoguchi. Seeing uh, Boni is in the and turn a blind eye to them in our, in our uh, continent. Don't forget, guys, Guti, we've been a program to go to see and self hate. So we were made to have hatred for everything about our continent. Good in the everything that we see in Africa, we don't appreciate it. And what I like, Uguti, Ugu Puma way to going outside, outside our country. It has opened our eyes, it has made us to be more patriotic. I've become more patriotic since I came to, to the UK instead of the time I was in South Africa. I never cared for anything that is African. I wouldn't attend Moja because I just told myself that I want to back it. I was on Christian's card. But I learned a lot. I attended Elion King in London. Oh, my word. I was so impressed. I was really impressed. So, as near as in Tokufanele, Sipil, the lake like Beskuluma self-identity we need to 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 build up a self-identity this is okay good see no turned of our own country which is africa like ulon i don't know between the two of you who said yeah change you where you did say that um um even europeans love africa more than tina they do they do that is why there are some countries here in europe who when you are South African, you don't even need a visa to go to their country. They allow you with just your passport. I've been to Turkey. I never used it. I never have to go and get a, a visa. I just went with my green passport and I just went in with, not, without any problem. And I don't think that's the only country. There's quite a few in Europe that allows us without any visa to show that they really love Africa. So that's all I wanted to say, and I would like to say goodbye. And Paulina, I hope this is a Salasi Kuluma, and I can't wait for the book. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sis Nomsa. And just to add that um, I think a lot of people think Zambia or whatever, Zimbabwe, they're thinking struggle. And it's not about struggle. It's not, you come here and everyone is living their best life. Um, and that's why I say people get shocked. You take pictures and they're like, are you sure you're in Zambia? What are you expecting to see in Zambia? You know, it's still, you know, we still have the things that you have, that we have in, in, in South Africa. We've got a lot of the shops that we have there. It's, it's not about, it's not a struggle. There's nothing like that. So. Yeah, we are all working here. Everyone is doing their thing. People are enjoying themselves. There's a nightlife. There's, you know, everything that you think you'd be missing out on. We have it all here as well. 
Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, I can't wait to go and visit African countries. And I've got a, a list, top of my list is Benin and Ghana uh, for their historic uh, relevance in the African history. But then, uh, yeah, Africa is beautiful. Let us visit Africa. Thank you so much, Pauline, for sharing your story. And uh, you are such an inspiration. You, when I grow up, I want to be like you. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe. And here is a link to Paulina's Instagram. Please do follow her. And you, 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 you'll, you'll think she's in some first world country. And she's here in Kamakelo and Zambia. Guys, we can even walk to Zambia. We can walk to Zambia. I see again, Ilete Ogutu, we are in the third world country. We are also in the first world country. Africa is the first world country in its own way. Let's forget about the media, a painter in Africa in a negative way. We are one white guy, a country member, a celebrity was asking, why is it always when, we, when pictures of African kids is on TV, they are told they, 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 they are always having uh, uh, flies on their faces. Are they told not to remove those flies? Because really, so that's the picture of Africa. And we are also, I always tell them, I'm not from the third world country, I'm from a first world country. So, <laughs> Guys, I see you again into a third world country. We are from the first world country. I don't care who says what. Goodbye, guys. Nizilega <laughs> people from first world countries, let's visit other first world countries. Uh, thank you so much, Polina. Thank you so much, Sis Nomta. Uh, I'm sorry you were late for this class. You will have to rewatch. And uh, yeah, don't forget to watch that link that I put. Here's Paulina's Instagram, do follow her. And uh, there is a link that I put, please do not forget it. I will also put it again so that so that you can watch uh, that pilot of Judge Katonga that we did in, in Zambia. And you will see the talent Ella Paezam. Paulina, you must come back and visit us. This can't, this can't be the last time you're here. No. <laughs> No, I will certainly come back. I will come back. Thank you so much for having me, Tenjiwe. Thank you for um, a lovely chat. It really has been great. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to coming to Lusaga, my neighbor. Yes, yeah. we're waiting for you, neighbor. We need to start building. Yo, our projects are pending. Mm, we've got projects pending, guys. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go into Africa. Let's go to African countries. You and I will never stop talking. I love you yeah. and I will see you soon. As soon as the gates are open, I am coming to Lusaga. Lungi okay. Lege. Bye. Please subscribe Bye. to my YouTube Thank channel you. for more videos. Subscription is free. Mahala.